Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Gajendra Deshpande and I'm working as assistant professor in KLS Cooter Institute of Technology, India. I'll be speaking uh, on uh, computation techniques for encrypted data. So these are the contents which we are going to discuss today. So what is homomorphic encryption? So let us understand it by a scenario. So imagine taking all of your credit card statements and locking them into a safe to which you have the only key. Your statements are now protected from prying eyes. This is what encryption does. But what if you wanted to analyze your expenditure on groceries in the last 12 months? First, you would have to unlock the safe and retrieve the statements. So now the documents are out in the open and they can be read by anyone. This is what decryption does. The difference with the homomorphic encryption is that you can create your report without taking the documents out of the safe. Now, there are two basic properties of homomorphic encryption. One is additive property and second one is multiplicative property. In additive property, what happens is you are going to encrypt the sum of PT1 and PT2, whereas you are going to add encryption of PT1 and encryption of PT2. Similarly, when I say multiplicative property, you are going to encrypt the product and uh, which is equivalent to or which is equal to encryption of PT1 multiplied by encryption of PT2. There are several uh, cryptographic algorithms, but if you see here, we are listed few. Now, these algorithms, either they support additive property or multiplicative property. So they don't support both. So when the algorithm supports only few or one of these properties, it is known as partial homomorphic encryption algorithm. If it supports both or arbitrary number of computations on encrypted data, then it is known as fully homomorphic encryption technique. So the example for FHE crypto system is the Gentry's crypto system. Now this example shows how uh, homomorphic encryption works. Now we have here two plain text P1 and P2 that is 5 and 10. Now, the corresponding encrypted value of 5 and 10 are 50 and 100, which are displayed here. And we are performing addition multiplication operation on the encrypted data. So we are not adding 5 and 10, instead we are performing operation on 50 and 100. So corresponding results are shown here. Now we are going to decrypt the results, that is 150 and 5000. So when you decrypt 150, you'll get 15. When you decrypt 5000, you'll get 50. So this is equivalent to the operations which you perform on plain text. Now what we have done is we have chosen RSA algorithm for our experimentation. So this uh, slide shows the algorithm, how RSA works. Now if you see here, this slide has two lines which are highlighted in red color. So basically they show the multiplication operation. So first one is n is equal to p into q. Second one is y of n is equal to p minus one into q minus one. So what we are going to do here in this experiment is, first we are going to execute the RSA algorithm as it is. We are not going to change anything in the algorithm. In the second case, we are going to replace these multiplication operations with the more sophisticated multiplication techniques such as Karasuba and FFT. Then we are going to test the algorithm again and compare the time. Now this is how ciphertext and uh, plain text are uh, calculated. So ciphertext is calculated by using a formula m raised to e mod n. So from if you are having the ciphertext now, you can convert it into plain text by using c raised to d mod n formula. Now this slide shows uh, how we have done the experimentation and it also shows the time complexity of uh, grade school method, Karsuba and fast Fourier transform method. So what we have done here is multiplication algorithms in RSA were replaced by Karsuba and FD methods one after the another. Then multiplication operations were performed on the encrypted numbers by Karsuba and FFT methods. Now this slide clearly shows the implementation of RSA algorithm in Julia. Now the results are shown here. We have chosen two numbers, two and three, and the corresponding uh, uh, encrypted values are shown. 
and we are performing multiplication operation here so 2 into 3 is 6 similarly we are performing multiplication operation on the encrypted text so that shows a large number here that is c1 into c2 now when we decrypt c1 into c2 that is equivalent to 6 so that is nothing but uh, which is equivalent to m1 into m2 that is 2 into 3 equal to 6 it also shows the time it takes to compute the value then in this slide uh, two multiplication operations are implemented one is the normal multiplication operation using the star operator then second one is there is a function called the mali FFT which uses fast forward transform techniques to uh, compute the product of two numbers now to compute the product of two numbers we have used fftw.jl library or package in julia so it supports FFT and IFT functions. So use those functions and perform some operations and uh, uh, perform the product of two numbers. Now it also shows the time it takes to uh, perform the multiplication operation using star operator and FFT method. If you see the FFT technique, it is taking more time here. But when you when the but when the number of input in increases and when the number of digits in the number increases let's say for example the when the number of digits in the number reaches 3000 4000 or maybe 8000 or 10000 in that case fft will give you better results compared to the start technique now this is the result which shows the computation time of uh, rsa algorithm so it shows when uh, the time it takes to perform multiplication operation on the plain text and time it takes to perform multiplication on the encrypted text. Now it shows encryption time, decryption time, and encryption uh, product time and decryption product time. And if you see the results here, the curse bar is more uh, uh, stable. Okay, FFT is also giving you the better results compared to the grade school method, but there is not much difference between FFT and Karsuba method. Yeah, so these results gives us uh, the hope that this can be used on uh, low resource devices such as Raspberry Pi or other devices. The next is machine learning and homomorphic encryption. So you can uh, build a privacy preserving machine learning algorithm using homomorphic encryption. So you need to follow these steps as pre processing, then encrypt the data set, then perform the compression of encrypted data, then you need to decrypt the results. Then it may also require some kind of post processing techniques. So you can use any library, machine learning library, say for example MXNet, take a plain text, encrypt it don't train the data on the plain text instead train the data uh, train your model on the encrypted data so in this way you can preserve your machine learning model then the conclusion so homomorphic encryption enables computation on untrusted resource so the computation time or ciphertext can be reduced by using cursor or FT techniques training and testing machine learning model may involve additional steps such as pre-processing and post-processing and the results into the additional computational complexity thank you